Welcome to Tent Talk, the podcast with Nancy McCready, where we talk about life under the big tent of God's presence and the provoking process of discipleship. Here we go. Hey, everybody. Welcome to Tent Talk. This is Nancy McCready. In this series of episodes, Good is Not the Goal, I pray that you will be opened up to source how important the source is from which you live and draw and where you find your strength, your confidence, your love, your compassion. It is important who is the source for all things can appear good on the surface. But my friends, if self is the source rather than God himself, as your source, then eventually everything is going to have its limits and you're going to hit the wall. And my heart is to draw you to himself. And for that to happen, the good of man as your source has to be exposed. Take a listen to these episodes. Go into the scripture. Let Holy Spirit awaken you to the source from which you draw. I pray that these will be helpful. Love you all. Good is not the goal, so let's look at why it is that Paul made it absolutely certain in Galatians 3 that we could see it was craziness to think that we were going to begin by the Holy Spirit but finish in our own self-efforts trying to reach perfection, living in the zenith of our own efforts, being uh, thrilled when we do well and devastated when we do so poorly. It just throws us about like a rag doll. And what Paul is saying is come out from all of that and come into Christ. And so he's telling us his pedigree. So we're right back in, in Philippians 3. And he has told us if anybody could be bragging about their flesh, bragging about their good, he said, it's me. And then he begins to list it for us, Philippians 3, 4 through 6. So listen to the paraphrase of this as I go through it. He says, here is my list. Here is my list of what I completely depended upon in my good which fought Jesus. Oh, it fought Jesus and his true church, my friends. Listen to this. He said, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. Now, I don't mean to be graphic, but but listen. He did not circumcise himself, and at eight days old, he did not take himself to the temple. He had a good family. He had good parents. He came from a good home, and they did the right thing. Many of us think that If we only had a good family and good parents who did the right thing, we would have ended up so much better. We would have been from good stock. My friends, listen carefully. God does not agree, right? God does not agree. Not that God is, obviously God is not against families that are strong and proper and, and healthy and full of life, but who would be the source of that, right? Is he the source of it or it is our own self goodness and our own self heritage. And, uh, we're of the belief good family produces good people. See, we blow the gospel out of the water with this kind of thinking because the scripture is very clear. My friends, the reason we needed the gospel is because we are born separated from God with a nature that has good and evil within it that will fight God at every turn. So I I pray that this is snapping your britches right now, my friends. I pray that this is getting your attention. So he says, I was circumcised when I was eight days old. I was of the race of Israel. He was of the right race. He says, I am in the race, the right race of Israel, the good race. He said, I'm in the darling tribe of Benjamin. I'm now in the right tribe. He says, I'm a Hebrew and the son of Hebrews. You could say he's, he's boasting here of his pure blood, no mixed breeds here. He is pure blood. He says, as to the observance of the law, I was of the party of the Pharisees. Now you you couldn't get much better than that in those days. I mean, of the high regard, the high place and the high synagogue, the front row, right? He was in it. He said, as to my zeal, 
I was a persecutor of the church. Now, it's amazing to me how this is thrown in here. Mm, Listen to this. I come from the right family. I'm in the right race. I'm in the right tribe. I am of the right blood. I am in the right parties. I am in the elites of the elites of the elites. And he says, and as to my zeal, I was a persecutor of the church. What does this mean? It means that he murdered people. Mm -hmm, That's what this means. And I tell people all the time, your good looking flesh will kill people just as fast as your ugly looking flesh. And I oftentimes say, you better hope whoever the good people are, you better hope they like you. Because if they don't, my friends, good is the most dangerous that there is. At least evil, you can see it coming a mile off. The good, my friends, oh, so subtle. So very, very subtle. Always in the appearance of looking good, yet while doing evil. And we want to recognize this And see that Paul just puts it right in there in his list of good. Because he believed he was doing God a service when he killed, molested, persecuted, imprisoned, whipped, and tortured the church. This is what he says. He's putting it in the list of his great flesh, his good flesh. And my friends, I'm here to tell you, it's just like a quarter. You can have heads or tails, but it's still a quarter. Flesh can be good or evil, but it's all still independent of God. It's man's own way. And when it's the residue of it is left within us in our soul and body, in the life of a born again believer, my friends, we have got to see this as the avowed enemy of Christ. And when it's seductive whispers come to you, seducing whispers. Look how awesome you're doing. You are amazing. I mean, look at you. And then you start to own those thoughts as your own. Wow. I never thought I'd be doing this good. I've got it. I'm just about to get on top of this. I've got a handle on this. Look how well I'm doing. And it just goes on and on and it just puffs you up. I always tell people, make you look like a Macy's day parade float, man. You are just puffed up. And this is what uh, begins to work, right? Against Christ in you, because Christ is not going to pump you up, my friends, to live separate from him. It's not going to happen. And I want to make sure that you understand, oh, there is a goodness. All right. But it's God's goodness. And this is what Saul who is about to become Paul, begins to realize in the book of Acts. Here in Philippians, he's listing it for us now because his hindsight is so sharp and he sees, he sees what his good was all about, how into it he was. He he was so proud. Mm -hmm. And then he says, and by the law's standard of righteousness... I was proven to be blameless and no fault was found with me. Oh, my friends, he is saying there is no fault with me. I am perfection in my own performance. I have produced a perfection. I am confident. Do you see the source of self-confidence, the source of self-motivation, the, the source of, of being on top of things and organized and I've got it and I've got the right systems and I got the juice on this stuff, my friends can literally run you headlong into disaster because my friends, this is not the same as Christ in you, Christ in you. Listen, He's given you his life, which was always the plan. He's given you his life. He produces the perfection. Your confidence is in him. And then he builds a confidence in you, in the you that he made, not who you made. See, we're not self-made people as the sons of God. I did not make myself. Right? I am made by him, forming Christ in me. So there are so many other things I could say, but as I have previously shared, why not hop on 
uh, ccf.life and register for Cross Encounter in Sealy, Texas, February 29th through March 2nd, and you can experience much more. What I want to do on the remaining of this, Good is Not the Goal 3.0, is to just share briefly that it is His goodness we are coming into. His goodness, my friends. And listen, the natural man has got great controversy with God about this because the natural man always believes that he makes a better God than God. Always. And it's always been the agenda of hell to always breed and promote separation and division between God and man, between father and sons. Be good enough apart from him. Be good enough and then show him what you've done and I'm sure he'll be so proud of you. My friends, do you really believe, I pray the the voodoo is breaking right now, do you really believe if God's entire desire is for you to be one with him that he's going to be applauding and giving out badges uh, for how well you're doing apart from him? Do we really believe that? Right. You see, he's after oneness. He is after a togetherness right? With you and him. And he wants to be the source of all perfection, of all production, that it comes out of Christ himself for his purposes. So we can see that deception here, this seducing, you see, divides, but truth unites, my friends. Truth brings you into oneness with him. Because this goodness of man will always be bringing God's character into question. Mm -hmm. Because again, that good and evil that's in the nature of man, separate from Christ, always believes that it makes a better God than God. And we need to understand that what God is after uh, is sons who live in oneness with him and who are glad about it. Glad-hearted sons like Jesus Jesus is like, I'm just doing what my father's doing. I'm just saying what my father is saying. And you see, this this is where I know that the voodoo, the, the, the spell of goodness, this lullaby of goodness that has come to put us uh, to sleep in an hour when we need to be sobered and awakened. I know that when this awakening happens, I know that God is going to have to have some private conversations with you, my friends, as he does with me. And there are three major things that he'll deal with you in those private conversations. This is not all inclusive, but my friends, if we're ever going to go from our own goodness and trusting in self and into trusting him and him alone and trusting in his goodness and sharing in his goodness, then number one, he's going to have to deal with our controversies with him. And you can see that in Jeremiah 15, 19 in the Amplified Classic. He's also going to have to wound you to heal you, my friends. He says this in Hosea 6, 1 through 3. He's also going to bring you to a place of real, true decision. Will you give up on self so that you might come into him? And this is known as self-surrender in Isaiah 55, 1 through 3, and Philippians 3, 7 through 10. It is so very key. Now, again, I'm giving you just a a hint of this. But we have to recognize that God wants to crown the year uh, with his bounty and goodness, right? He wants us to walk in his way as it drips with the fatness of, of great joy and great oneness with him and we delight in the goodness of our God and we live in it no longer attempting to be good enough in ourselves or competing with him. Psalm 65 11 in the Amplified Classic, you crown the year with your bounty and goodness and the tracks of your chariot wheels drip with fatness. Oh, this is amazing. Oh, so much I want to say about his goodness. His goodness has to be revealed, my friends, in the context of our depravity and thinking that we can be good enough. Because then and only then, as he brings 
the revelation that only he can to reveal what our goodness really is, what it's really doing, what it's really saying, and show it for the depravity that it is. Only then can his goodness as our only source can bring us into our greatness. Psalm 71 11 in the Amplified Classic, increase our greatness. And so this is where we begin to recognize that he's looking to enlarge us, to increase our greatness and to enlarge us for a greater capacity for sharing in his goodness, his confidence, his creativity, his compassion, his everything. And when it says that his goodness will increase our greatness, that greatness means our magnitude, the impact that we have, our number, our density, our sound, my friends. Oh, Oh, so much to say here that he wants to bring us into a greater depth of his goodness so that he can increase our greatness. That we will be able to say, if you've seen us, you've seen our father. Do you see his goodness? Do you see him in us? Right? This is uh, a major aspect of the cry of the sons of God that we cry out, Father, Father, all your ways have dealt bountifully with me. You are so good. And I will speak well of your ways, Father. I will speak of your goodness. And this is where, you know, he builds his sons. And I assure you that a part of the building process is he has to expose that good is not the goal. I pray, my friends, that these simple episodes have awakened you to him, my friends. We must come out of the sleep of our own goodness. This voodoo must break. The spell has got to come off of his people so that we can awaken to him and live in our deepest oneness with him so that we can move with him in the greatness that he has written in us and over us and can only be accomplished when he is our total source. I love you all and I do pray that these have provoked you to give up on your own goodness, my friends, and embrace his. Love you all. Thank you for listening today. Before we go, I have one final ask and a bit of info. If you like our content, hit the share button to tell someone about it And subscribe at nancymccready.com forward slash podcast so you don't miss another episode. Also, I don't know if you've heard, but Google Podcasts are going away in April. So if you listen on Google Podcasts, jump over now and make sure you subscribe to Tent Talk Podcast on my YouTube channel. All of our podcasts are listener supported and your gifts at nancymccready.com are greatly appreciated. Until next time.